Many of you might have seen this story unravel over the past weekend about the big trucker boycott for NYC where they're just going to stop delivering all kinds of goods to the city showing support for this recent lawsuit against Donald Trump for all the money that he's going to have to pay for inflating his property values. Now, this is not going to be a political video by any means, but what I really want to showcase in this video is the power of the people, specifically the truckers in this case, okay? Now, first of all, the guy who started all this, Chicago Ray, he's a trucker, he has an X account, and how all this started was he put up a post a few days ago talking about how, you know, it's ridiculous what happened to Donald Trump and that him and a bunch of other truckers should just stop delivering loads to New York City in support of Trump and against this ruling that we saw. Long story short, apparently that's not going to happen anymore. At least it's not going to happen at the hand of Chicago Ray because he decided to take down his video and no longer move forward with this trucker boycott. He doesn't want to be the leader of this movement, he says, but there's other truckers out there who are still in favor with what he said and want to move forward with this. But as of me shooting this video, there still hasn't been any major consequences. There still hasn't been any real uh, shutdown of deliveries coming into NYC that I could find. Now, Chicago Ray claims that he decided to change his mind and took down the post that originally ignited this whole firestorm because it upset his grandson. Well, that sounds like a pretty weak excuse. I don't really think that's true. Maybe he received threats from people who are up there, let's say. That's probably more likely what happened if you ask me. There's no way to prove that, obviously. But for him to retract this whole thing just a few days later sounds kind of suspicious to me. And even if he didn't retract it, I don't know how successful this movement would be. But the main point of all this, if you ask me, is how much power people actually have that they don't give themselves credit for. You know, I've been talking about similar things like this in my videos for a while, specifically when it comes to paying all these taxes that we have to pay, property taxes, you know, continue to go up, and people just continue to pay. And I think people could really start to make a difference if they were able to just boycott paying property taxes for a while and just have an entire city or an entire county just stop paying. You know, if people could coordinate an effort like that, then you could actually accomplish things and get things done. Because imagine if this trucker boycott would have actually happened and then YC stopped receiving all deliveries. Now that would be pretty extreme, but let's say that that happened, you know, it would probably shut down the city within a matter of a couple of weeks, guys. It would be a state of emergency, actually. So it would be a huge problem, all because a few dozen truckers, maybe hundreds of them, would decide not to deliver loads to NYC? Would other ones come in and pick up the slack and you know maybe take bonuses that maybe they would start offering to people for doing this? Who knows? We really don't know how it would play out. But I just want people to pay attention to what could happen if people could just band together like this. I mean, that's how this country started, guys, really. This country was started by a bunch of upset people in Europe that were tired of being under the rule of a king and being forced to pay taxes and being forced to conform to different religions that they didn't agree with. And so they came here and said, you know what? Screw all that noise, we're not gonna do that. And now a couple hundred years later, we're falling right back into the same trap again. There's no doubt that taxes of all form in this country are out of control. Income taxes, out of control. Sales taxes, out of control. Property taxes, out of control. Any, all sorts of taxes are just way too high. The interesting thing is nobody ever paid any sort of income tax, I think until 1913, it was the early 1900s before the, the United States ever even started collecting an income tax on anybody. And somehow, amazingly, our society was able to function and we were able to continue to have paved roads, continue to have clean water, continue to have things that we need to have to function as a society, but yet nobody remembers that because nobody who's alive today was there to see any of that.
And obviously the quality of life probably wasn't as good back then in the early 1900s as it is today because things have just gotten better, guys. We have technology now that makes our lives much cushier and easier, no doubt. You can walk into a grocery store and find just about any product you would want. Back then, that probably wasn't possible at all. You probably still have to grow a lot of your own food, and whatever the grocery store did have was very limited to what the local farmers could produce. That was probably about it. But I think something needs to be done, you know? Like, we cannot continue to have this situation where people are being priced out of their own homes or really taxed out of their own homes. I've heard numerous stories from you guys who have written me via email and my comment section talking about how you know elderly people that can literally are being forced to sell their homes because their taxes are just going too high. You know, there's this whole myth that if you have a paid off house, you're gonna live happily ever after in retirement. And that is not the case, guys. At least maybe it used to be, but it's not anymore. And it's because of taxes and insurance. And obviously it would be impossible to get everybody throughout the entire country together and say, hey, stop paying your taxes. But if these truckers can get upset enough about, you know, Donald Trump being fined, you know, that's not even their money. It's not even their brother or their father or whoever is being fined by this, but they support Trump enough to want to do this. Then why can't we support ourselves enough? You know, what about our bills, guys? Forget about Donald Trump. He's got money. You know, what about our bills? What about paying your taxes every year? Are you happy with that? Anyways, for now, the trucker boycott seems to be canceled for NYC. But you know what's not canceled is this global recession. I kind of touched on this a little bit the other day, but the world's six largest economies, four out of the six of them right now are in a recession, guys. China, the UK, Japan, and Germany are all in recession right now. And those economies are the world's biggest producers of all the things that we buy. And if they're not doing well right now, to sit here and think that this isn't gonna affect us, you're just dreaming. You know, there's no way that these big major economies can go through a big downturn and somehow it's not going to spill over to being here in the U.S. So things are going pretty bad in China right now. And what they're doing is they just decided to lower their interest rates, guys. This is something that people keep anticipating here in the U.S. Everybody's wondering when the Fed is going to make a pivot. Well, the People's Bank of China, they just did this and they brought their five-year loan prime rate from 4.2% down to 3.95% with more projected cuts in the future in order to basically re-stimulate the economy over there that is dying. They have deflation over there right now, so prices are actually going down. It's unlike here in the US where we still have inflation and prices continue to go up. And they think that by lowering these interest rates, it's gonna stimulate their crumbling housing market and also try to help with the slowing uh, consumer exports, guys. But there, here's the problem with all these big central banks, including in China, it's always too little too late. They wait until things are already in crisis mode to start cutting and then try to save it with these emergency rate cuts. But the problem is it never works because it's already too late. Things are, the, you know, the ball's already rolling. You know, it's already in motion. The crash is already happening. So the economists over there are worried that without more aggressive government and central bank support to rekindle growth, that China could slip into a rut of falling prices that becomes harder to reverse the longer that all this lasts. So once again, they're relying on all the crazy government stimulus over there to try to turn things around, and maybe they will, but not without causing major financial problems for their country. And guess who's next? The USA. Now, one of the big shots at Wells Fargo, Eric Nelson, he's now claiming that the Fed is going to be cutting rates a bunch of times this year, and they're basically gonna be emergency rate cuts just like what China's doing right now because of how bad the economy is and that these job numbers that we're seeing are not nearly as good as we're being told right now. And it's interesting that somebody else is actually saying this who's like, you know, 
in the public spotlight who works for a big bank like Wells Fargo and is part of the mainstream, right? They're saying this now. He thinks the Fed's gonna cut interest rates anywhere from 100 to 125 basis points over the next month. And the market somewhat agrees with him because they're pricing in a 34% chance uh, that the Fed is gonna cut rates by 100 basis points by the end of this year. So that's not a very good chance, but they're saying it's possible. Even the Fed officials themselves have said that there's probably only gonna be 75 basis points cut this year total, and that's it. But as the year keeps going on, those rate cuts are actually looking less and less likely because so far, no rate cuts in the future, guys. Like the chances of one happening in May are basically nil. The next chance after that is June. If that doesn't happen, the year's already half over and no rate cut. But this guy, Eric Nelson, he thinks that we're gonna see some strong data that is going to change the Fed's opinion, they're gonna start cutting rates sooner than later. And he thinks it could happen as soon as the next few weeks when it's evident that the job market isn't as strong as the numbers suggest. He says, on the surface, hiring remains robust in the US. The economy added 353,000 jobs in January, which is much more than expected. Meanwhile, unemployment rates still at 3.7%. So that's the issue, right? It all looks good on the surface, but when you dig a little bit deeper, that's where they start seeing the problems. And he says that much of the strength that we're seeing was seasonal and it's no longer reflected in the upcoming jobs reports. And even though we had this big 350,000 job report in January, it's probably more like 150 to 200,000 when, when the revisions come in. Because once again, the revisions all last year, we're all revised down, guys. In 11 of the 12 months throughout 2023, the jobs numbers continued to be revised down. And nobody wants to acknowledge that the vast majority of these jobs that were created are low paying service jobs that a lot of people don't want. And many of them are part time on top of that. So no benefits, no way to really support or feed your family with any of this, just Mickey Mouse jobs, people that need help at these different businesses, but really don't have the budget to pay you a full time wage. So how is that a sign of a strong economy when all the businesses that are hiring don't really need any real help? They just need a little bit of help and they're not willing to pay you good money for the help that they need either. And at the same time that these jobs reports continue to be revised down, you're gonna see hiring continue to slow down throughout 2024, he says. He says that the unemployment claims right now are hovering around 1.9 million, which is getting close to recessionary levels. Even the New York Fed is still predicting there's a 61% chance that the economy could tip into a recession by January of 2025. And conveniently enough, that prediction doesn't come until 2025, right? After the election has already taken place. It's so coincidental. Why isn't that prediction you know, that we're gonna fall into a recession by October of 2024, huh? But I think if nothing else, guys, if nothing else takes us down, it's gonna be these bad loans with commercial real estate because this is gonna cause massive trouble in the banking system that I don't think our government or the Fed is really equipped to handle. And that's already evident by what happened last year in March when we had those few bank failures. They had to set up a special program, the bank term funding program, just to help out existing banks so more of them didn't fail and they bailed out the banks that did fail. So that was already a huge red flag back then, but it seems like they got it all under control, right? Except it's not under control because we just found out that the volume of commercial mortgages that are at least 30 days late on payments soared past the total reserves held by the largest U.S. banks last year. The FDIC reported big banks like Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo have all seen their average reserves drop from $1.60 to $0.90 cents for each dollar of commercial mortgage debt at least 30 days delinquent, guys. So that means if all of these bad loans continue to stop paying then literally all of these banks would be bankrupt from it even the big ones and we know that the small banks are the ones that are actually holding the most of this debt this these, these bad commercial loans and so they're gonna be the ones to go first but this is really bad because the amount of commercial property debt held by the top banks 
actually tripled in 2023 to $9.3 billion. And these are all loans that are backed by offices, malls, apartment buildings, other commercial properties. And it's funny that you see, continue seeing the stock market go up and people just acting like none of this matters, you know? Global recession, who cares? Potential for more bank failures coming in the near future, who cares? All anybody cares about is watching the S&P 500 go up, guys. Which I think I heard on uh, Thoughtful Money on Adam Taggart's channel the other day, somebody explained how the S&P 500 is basically a Ponzi scheme at this point because the price continues to go up because you have all the dumb money pouring in that is continuing to invest now at an all-time high, continuing to make the people who have already been invested for a long time richer, and meanwhile, when things drop, you're gonna be the one holding the bag because you don't, you're not really seeing any of the benefits from it. So the fact that people are doing this is just really stupid right now. And it's funny because it seems like sometimes when I see some of the dumb comments, like that things are going so great and you know this is the best economy ever because of all of this, it seems like those people just want me to come out and say, yeah, now's a great time to just jump in and pay all time high prices for real estate. Don't worry about that. It's not gonna be a problem. No consequences from doing that. Your home value will never go down. Don't worry about investing in the stock market today even though it's at all time highs because it's only gonna go up from here. Like, when has that ever happened in history, guys? When have we ever had you know, prices balloon into a bubble like this and it just sustained forever? Never. It never ever does that. At some point it comes down. So I will never be the one advising people to make those foolish moves, but you can do whatever you want, it's your money. I personally like to always err on the side of caution when it comes to finances. It's perfectly fine taking different chances in life with some things, but not when it comes to your life savings. And to make things worse, we were just talking about the Fed rate cuts, right? How Eric Nelson over at Wells Fargo thinks they're gonna be cutting rates basically five times this year. But the Fed's only saying three at most, and so far there's been zero. Well, guess what, guys? That's a big problem for this commercial real estate debacle as well. As these interest rates remain higher for longer, it's, gonna, it's just gonna continue to cause more of these commercial real estate defaults on their debt because they literally cannot afford to refinance their loans at today's rates. And there is over a trillion dollars worth of these commercial real estate loans that are going to need to be refinanced between now and the next two years. So that could be one of the reasons why this guy is predicting that they're gonna have to do these emergency cuts to maybe save the commercial sector, but so far they haven't done it. But personally, I think all this is just a huge disaster waiting to happen. I don't think there's anything they can really do to fix all of this. Even when the emergency rate cuts come, it's probably gonna be just like China. It's gonna be too little, too late, and you're already gonna see too many failures happen happening in the system and that's it guys we're, we're back to the great financial crisis 2.0 only this time it's probably going to be worse because this time we have more problems than we did last time you know something interesting though is i did a consulting call the other day with one of my subscribers brian and he asked me an interesting question he said what would you do michael just a hypothetical question about this interest rate situation right now would you keep them higher would you lower them what would you do and personally i would raise them guys because clearly inflation is not under control yet and also what that would do is it would force all these zombie companies that are have been relying on debt to continue growth and continue doing everything to go out of business and there would be no bailout for any of them and let's just let them fail and restart this economy based on real numbers, not debt. Because everything right now is based on debt and the lower interest rates are, the more it incentivizes people to borrow money they don't have, whether it's for houses, boats like we see here, or running a business, either way, they don't have the money. So higher interest rates would do the exact opposite. It would, it would force people to save more and only really spend the money they have. And it, yes, it would slow down the economy, would definitely put us into a recession, but it would also hit the reset button on the debt, okay? And make it so that people and businesses would now be forced to only spend money they actually have for a change. When was the last time that was the case? Never, as far as I'm concerned. Now I realize that that's a big fantasy. It's never gonna happen, especially since I'm not in charge of the system. But just like 
trying to stop everybody from paying taxes in order to get people's attention and lower that, you know, it's good for us to dream and uh, have ideas about how we would change things if we were in charge. So I don't know if you guys agree with my idea there, but feel free to put your opinions because you put them whether I ask for them or not. <laughs> and also one other benefit of having the high interest rates would be is it will continue to incentivize people to stack money and earn interest, guys. Like, you know, when interest rates are high, it makes you want to save money and continue to getting paid higher and higher interest on the money that you are saving. I think what it would do is it make it so that only people who can really afford to buy a house or really afford to buy a car go out there and do it and it would force everybody else to refrain you know like look i can't afford this right now i need to keep saving and ultimately what that would do is lower the price of everything because since everything runs on debt if nobody can afford to finance things that's the only thing that keeps this whole show going inevitably the prices on everything we buy would be forced to come down because the price would only go as far as what people can actually afford to pay not based on loans because people wouldn't be able to afford the payment so in the end, it would be a really good thing for everybody. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.